Hi everyone, how are you doing? All being well, I should now be live. So as I always do at the start of live streams, could I please ask you just to let me know in the chat, please, if you can see me and hear me, because those are both pretty important. So let's just wait to see if we have people here. So again, if you don't mind, just let me know if you can see me okay, if you can hear me okay. And also just let me know where you're from and put your name in there, where you're from. Um, it'd be good to, to know who's watching. And tonight's live stream, or today's live stream, I should say, in the UK, is going to be all about Lightroom. And I'm going to be editing live in Lightroom, which is the first time I've ever done this on a live stream. So it's a little bit nerve wracking, but hopefully technology will serve us well and uh, we'll all work fine. But again, I'm just gonna wait until I know that um, I'm actually live and working because you always have this weird thing at the beginning where it feels like you're talking to yourself. Excellent, thank you very much, Mark. How are you doing? Hi, Helder from Portugal, amazing. Hope you're well. If you could also let me know as well out of interest, so just put a few things in the chat, like your name, where you're from, but also if you use Lightroom, because um, I know that a lot of people use Capture One, so just let me know um, what you use currently. It'd be interesting to, to find out. And the other thing which I'd also ask, if you don't mind, please, just to like the stream, just hitting the like button underneath because that helps push the stream out to, um, to more people. But it's good, it all seems to be working okay. So so yeah, thank you for joining the stream. I hope you're gonna find it useful. I'm gonna do the stream for between one and two hours. We'll see how we go. And it's all going to be all about editing in Lightroom. I launched this week my new uh, Lightroom preset pack, which I'm really proud with. Um, so I'm going to be talking about that on the stream and demonstrating it as well to show you how I use my own presets to edit my images, but also do so in, in quite a quick way. Um, hi, Dave from Runcorn. Nice to um, ask you to join us. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's all good. So we've got 16 people watching at the moment. So again, if you wouldn't mind just hitting the like button, that would be amazing, thank you, because that just make a big difference in terms of getting the stream out there so other people can join. And again, if you could just let me know if you use Lightroom and also just let me know if you use presets in general, because I know that some people use Lightroom and just sort of each time they import an image into Lightroom, they'll just um, make changes um, as and when rather than applying a preset on import. So just to try and get an idea about where you're all up to when it comes to uh, using Lightroom. One second. Cool. Excellent. So what I'll do now is I'm going to open up Lightroom. Now, feel free to, I want this stream to be really interactive. So please do feel free to ask questions, put them in the chat, and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Once I've actually opened Lightroom, I can't see the questions, but I'm going to keep on coming back and referring to them. So the first thing to mention when before, just before we open Lightroom, as I say, is that I'm going to be using uh, Lightroom the latest version of Lightroom Classic and the presets that I'm going to be using are for all from my latest pre preset pack, which was released this week. And that's what I want to do. I want to show you how those presets work and how I use them within a workflow because it's important to say, as I always, as I say actually at the beginning of a video which, um, which accompanies the preset pack, this is the sad truth about presets. No preset in the world, no Lightroom preset in the world will ever make your images look brilliant with one click. Sadly, that is just impossible. I know we'd all love that to be the case, including me, but it's just not. So if anybody ever says, like, oh, buy my preset pack and look what you can achieve with one click, it's, it's never going to work that way, unfortunately, because we all shoot slightly differently. Some, some of us might, put, like me, for example, I shoot purposely underexposed. Um, other people might shoot a little bit overexposed or, or whatever, but because of, of that, the preset will obviously have a different effect based on the settings that you shoot at. It will also to do with your white balance and, and everything like that. So it's impossible for any preset to to just work magically out of the box with one click, unfortunately. However, once you learn the preset, the, the order of using presets, and you learn the process, and that's what I try and, and, and um, demonstrate um, in the preset pack, then it becomes much easier, and you will get good results 
quickly but the process is what's important the process is probably more important than the precepts themselves so that's the first thing i always want to make very very clear that i don't want anyone if, if anybody's interested in trying these precepts to 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 download them and think oh they don't work because they're not designed to work with one click they're designed to work as as part of a process so the preset is part one of that process Part two is what I call global changes. And again, I'm going to be demonstrating all this in a second. Global changes mean changes that affect the whole of the image. And part three is where we apply selective changes. And usually that's in the form of brushes. So that is the process in a nutshell. Start, stage one is choosing the preset that you want to apply. Stage two is making global changes. And stage three is using the preset. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, but D Dave just said in the chat, which is basically what, what I've just mentioned, that the base, he, apl he applies the basic preset on import, which is what I do, um, some clarity and sharpening, and then tweak each image. That's basically what I'm getting at. But again, I, 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 I know that there are people out there who will say, buy my presets and look what you can do. And you can, but it's not as easy as just like one click done. Sadly, you know, I don't want to put, make anybody think that that is the case because it's it's obviously not. So I always think it's only fair to let everybody know that. So all being well, I'm just going to open up Lightroom now and hopefully you can see this. So could you just let me know again in the chat, please? Sorry to be paying. If you could just, if you can, if you're looking at Lightroom now, hopefully you are all being well. Just wait for people to let me know. Again, please let me know where you're watching from. I'd always be really interested to know. I'm just going to make sure that we you can see this okay. The stream is always a, about a minute, I think, behind the, the live chat. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm like a, a minute in front of you. But there's no point in me <laughs> demonstrating all this if you can't actually see Lightroom. Perfect. Thank you very much. So you're seeing Lightroom now. So... We've got at the bottom here, lots of raw files. These are all straight out of camera raw files that I'll be editing. So I'm just gonna move this window. And the, and the reason I've chosen these raw files is just because that they demonstrate different aspects of the, of the various um, presets which, which um, I'm going to be showing you. So I'm just gonna open this preset pack. Again, let me just say that this preset pack is now available to buy from two places one it's available from a direct download from my website so if you want to do that the links are in the description for both of these so number one the first place is my website and number two which to be honest this is far cheaper to do it this way for february only they are available to download for free in the patreon um, and that will save you about 75% on the, the actual cost of the presets. Um, so but that's February only. So let's first of all open up the preset and see what is in there. So as you'll be able to see now, I have two color presets and two black and white presets. These basically, but I've also developed those color presets for four different cameras for, for Nikon, Sony, Fuji, and Canon. The reason being that each different camera has slightly different color profiles. Um, so what I've tried to do, I, I use Sony cameras. I did shoot Nikon, so I'm very used to using Sony and Nikon files, but through images that have been very kindly um, sent to me by members of my Patreon who use Canon cameras and Fuji cameras, I've, I've developed a preset for them based on the, the color profile of what I use for Sony. Um, and I've done that by changing the HSL sliders. So whichever camera you use, I'd obviously recommend that you know you, you click on, on the color preset for, for your camera. Now there are two color presets. The first one is the main preset and the other one is for lifting shadows. I'm gonna explain why I have two presets as we go through the stream. But one thing to say is I don't want to ever use more than two because that if you do, if you use like, you know, seven, eight different nine presets, your work is not going to be consistent. And personally, I think that's really important. I think you want to make sure that your work has a consistency because if it doesn't, it's a bit all over the place. So I would definitely recommend that whichever presets you use, if it's your own, somebody else's, that you try and just limit the number of presets that you use to make your work look consistent. And I also have two black and white presets. Again, I'll explain that as we go through the stream. But basically there are four presets, two color and two black and white. So the first step in my process is obviously to apply the preset. Now with this example, 
I'm going to actually apply lifting shadows. Now that is used, that's actually the, the preset that I don't use as much. But the reason that I'm just going to apply that in this example is because the couple are backlit. So the main preset I would I would normally use when the light is good. Um, and by that, what I mean is that the light is on the couple or on our subject. That's the one that I would use the main preset 80% of the time. But just in this example, as the first one that I want to show you, we're going to use um, the lifting shadows. So that's what the preset will do sort of straight out of the box, as it were. We're now going to make global changes. But re in reality, I don't really need to make any global changes to this image because I actually think it looks okay. But the, the, this is where it gets really important. And the, and the most important aspects about my preset pack are the brushes. And as you'll be able to see, there are seven brushes that I've created. And these all allow me to get to where I want to go with my editing very quickly. So the, the one that I would use the most is called the Faces Brush. So I'm just going to select Faces Brush. And what that does, it's going to just increase the exposure. The expre it's going to increase the exposure slightly on the couple's faces. And it's also going to decrease the clarity. So it's just going to soften the skin slightly as well. Um, we can always change the power of the brush by using this slider. So I'm just going to go over the faces slightly like this just to make them stand out a little bit. That's all I would do. Um, you'll see that the feather of this brush is very wide, so you'll never see the join either. Um, so you you know we, where the brush starts and where it ends, you won't really be able to tell. It's a very subtle edge to the brush, which is again something that I think is is really important. Um, what I'm now going to do is introduce another brush, which is called Golden Gaze, which is from oh sorry done that wrong. I need to click on New first. So New. Golden Gaze, and, and this is from an Ian Brown song, if anyone is familiar with Ian Brown from the Stone Roses, if you're wondering where I've got the name from. And what this does is it makes the light really warm and soft. So this works really well with images where you have that sort of golden light. It's just going to accentuate that even more, as I will show you here. So we've got nice warm light here. So I'm just going to just go over there, a little bit of there as well. And that's all I would do really for that image. So if we go back to what we had at the beginning, so that's the raw file, and that's where we've got to within our process. And as you can see, it's very quick. So both what we did there, we applied the preset, we applied the faces brush, and then we applied the golden gaze brush, and we've gone from there to there. So it's really, really simple. I'm going to just reset that and do that again, just to show you in real time. So let's click on our, our lifting shadows preset again. Then let's choose the faces brush over there we go let's click on new golden gaze brush so what you can't see i've got to move the windows around on my screen because it's um and that's how quick it would be to get to where i want to go with that image so i'm just going to um just see what the chat's saying hi peter from guernsey thank you very much for joining um hi jasmine from well from la had a couple of um or oh, one la photographer jasmine you may know marlise hartman very kindly came on the patreon for a live stream recently um so she's in pace not too far from you so thank you very much for joining siebel hi hi for, thank you very much for joining all the way from ireland um siebel said can you hit your histogram arrow to hide the highlights um, I can't see the presets effect clearly. Oh, sorry, yes, yeah. Good point, thank you. I'll, I'll talk about them in a second. So what Siebel just said then is because I have these, these selected here, it's showing me where the blown highlights are. So basically we've gone from there. Oh, let me turn it off again. Oh, why is light, Lightroom sometimes does this? If I go into another image, then go back. Yeah, there we go. So we've gone from there to there by using the process. Again, I want to keep on going on and about it's the process. It's not just one preset. The preset is the foundation. We then make global changes and then use the brushes to take the image where we want to go. Um, and the preset really is probably at like the third most important thing. The process, the overall process is the most important aspect. The, um, the brushes are then second to that and the preset is just the foundation. Um, hi, Eric. Thank you for joining us from, from Virginia. Amazing. 
Um, James has said, if someone getting started on a limited budget, um, would you advise I invest in first to improve my images, new laptop and editing software or camera body and lenses? Whoa, that's a big question. So let's just break that down. So it's a good question that James. Um, limited budget, want to invest first to improve my images, a new laptop and editing software. So I would say, first of all, in terms of the things that are most integral, Lightroom for me is 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 top of the list. I couldn't I couldn't produce the images that I do and the edit and edit my images how I want to without using Lightroom. There are other options like Capture One, but I'm so used to using Lightroom, it's ingrained in me. I've been using Lightroom since it first came out, so since like the the very first version. So I'm very sort of um used to Lightroom. So that would be the top thing for me. Obviously, the better laptop or computer that you have, the better Lightroom is going to run. Um, but I would say that Lightroom would be the top of the list. Camera and lenses, I mean, sounds a strange thing to say, but they, they wouldn't be as integral to me. I mean, if, as long as you buy a, a decent camera that's been made in the past four or five years, that's that's going to you know be, be good enough quality. Um, so I would say, actually, that would be lower down the list. For me, I, I have to have Lightroom. Um, and obviously, you know, you want to have a machine that is able able to run Lightroom. So it's very hard without knowing your specific circumstances to answer that, I'm afraid. But hopefully that gives you um, some, some help. Um, so let's just move on to another image now where we use the main preset just to show you. Again, you won't be able to see this, but I've got windows open all over the place. So it's just a little bit tricky for me. Um, so let's just go to Let's go to this one. Now this was taken on my Nikon camera. So I'm going to apply the Nikon preset to this one. Now this is where the light is good. So let's just actually just reset this. So when I, the, the reason I use the main preset here is that the light is on the bride's face. Well, it's actually taken on a workshop. But either way, the, the light is on the bride's face. So this would not be, for me anyway, a case of using the lifting shadows preset. This would be the main preset. So taken on a Nikon, as you might be able to see from the raw file, .nef file. So let's click on Nikon main preset. So that's, that's the main preset done but it's still underexposed. Now, one thing to, to talk about a little bit is I shoot underexposed in camera on purpose. The reason being is that I don't want to lose highlights when I'm taking my images because if you lose highlights, then they're gone forever. And it's just gonna be, if you're printing out images, that's when it can look really weak because there is no detail in a blown highlight. So you're just gonna have pure white, which doesn't look great, especially on printed images so that's the reason that i chew underexposed in camera but that what that does mean is that when i apply the preset i need to increase the exposure to bring back the detail so that's why the preset has built in a plus 0.70 um exposure boost because i'm shooting underexposed but that's the reason um i think if you shoot um, expose, shoot how the camera would like you to shoot, you're going to actually lose a lot of highlights quite often. Now, sometimes you can't help but lose highlights. If we go back to the image which I just showed you, the first edit, as by clicking on this little arrow up, up here, excuse me, obviously you can see that we've lost highlight there. But that's, that's fine. It's a very bright background. It's the sun, basically, so you can't retain highlights there, because if you do, the shadow area is going to be so dark that we're going to lose those. So there's certain times where you just can't do that. However, where I can, I like to retain highlights. So that's the reason that I shoot underexposed. So the, re the preset there, as you see, has plus 70 dialed in. So what I'm now going to do is push up the preset a little bit more. This is, these are the global changes. So let's just put the exposure to a point where I feel like it's in the right ballpark. And th there it is. Um, one thing to mention as well is how important to me the histogram is in terms of the way that I edit. So I would again recommend that you edit by having the histogram open and you look at the histogram because what this is doing is showing you how much detail is in the raw file that on the and and is in the whole file. So if if for example we bring down our whites, you see there's a gap on the right hand side. The histogram basically is the visual representation of these sliders. So if you look here, if we go into the left-hand side, these are all the shadow areas, we see 
the word blacks there. Then we go into shadows. Then it's like a no man's land. Then we've got highlights and then we've got whites. So because there's a gap on the right hand side there, that to me says I want to increase the whites. Um, and when I do that, it's going to give the image punch and vibrancy and it's just going to make it pop a little bit more so i like to go up push the whites up until the point where we've we've covered the whole width of that histogram this is all to all to achieve by the way a look which i personally like as i say i'm trying to achieve with my editing punchy images images with clarity and images that are vibrant and colorful and just pop out I'm not really personally a fan of sort of light, desaturated, airy images. There is nothing wrong if that is what you prefer, but personally, I'm trying to go for more contrasty, vibrant images. Again, it all goes down to personal preference. There is no right or wrong answer, but the way that I edit is to try and achieve contrast. And the way that I achieve that, as I say, is by making sure that the... the um, the details go all the way from the left hand side to the right hand side of the histogram again just to reiterate if you if the if there is a gap on the left or the right you're not maximizing the raw file data and it's not going to give you a punchy contrasty image so that's the reason that i do that so let's just so they, they will be my global changes if anything it might be a little bit too warm this image so i'm going to drop down the white balance and that would be it. Global changes don't take very long because I'm, I'm shooting in a style which suits the presets. Um, because as I say, I'm shooting under exposed and the preset is correcting that for me. So let's now go to our brushes and make um, selective changes. This is part three of the process. In this case, all I'm probably gonna do is apply the faces brush again. So let's go to faces. And unsurprisingly, I'm just going to go over the Bryce face here and again as I just mentioned a second ago which is in case you just joined the stream what that is doing is just lifting up the exposure of the face slightly but it's also at the same time lowering the clarity of, of the face as well which is good because we're, 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 we're talking about faces so you don't really want clarity to be high on faces because if, if it is it's not, it's not going to be very flattering so that's all I would do there now another thing to talk about is that I like my images to I, I want to try and readjust and i've made a whole video on this on, on my channel i want the brightest part of the image to be the the image the part of the image that i want you to look at so in this example i obviously want you to look at the bride's face that to me is the focal point of the photograph so i can use that that knowledge of knowing that you will automatically look at the brightest part of the photograph first to to basically direct your eye. So at the moment, the bride's face, in my opinion, is not the brightest part of the photograph. The, the top of the dress here is on a shoulder, and maybe even if top left-hand corner. So that's sort of fighting for our attention. And we look at the brightest part of the photograph naturally. We don't even know we even do it. It's just a human instinct. If you look at something, you automatically look at the brightest part first. We're like magpies. So knowing that, it's good to try and bring back the highlights on the areas that we don't want your eye to look at straight away so for that i have another brush let's click on new and we're going to go to a brush called save highlights and what that is going to do is just bring down the highlights of the areas that could be distracting and when you do that your eye will automatically go now to the bride's face more now again if you want to change the strength of what we've just applied we can do that very easily just by moving the brush up or down so i'm going to put it to about there i think and again, that will probably be it. It's a very quick process. So let's look at our before and after. That's the raw file, and that's where we've got to. And again, we got there really quick. So again, just to show you in real time. So I've got to move some of these windows around again. So let's apply the Nikon preset. Let's then make our global changes. Notice that the histogram's got that little bit of give in it, so I can bring those up. These won't be exactly the same settings, but you'll, you'll get the idea. We'll again go to our brushes. We're going to click on faces. Over we go. Again, we can change the strength. You notice that I don't just go over the face as well. I just go over the parts that are a little bit in shadow. And then lastly, again, let's go to new and save highlights. And there we go. Let's just bring those back. This is a nightmare trying to move all these windows across at the same time. And yeah, I just think I just want to just lower the strength of that really, really quick. We've gone from there to there. 
So let's just break off for a second and just see if we have any questions. Is this all making sense? Is this good? I hope it's all very useful to you. Again, for those that have just joined, if I could ask you a big, big favour, please. If you don't mind, please just hit in the, um, the like button. That would be really amazing. I'd be, I'd be really appreciative of that sometimes, if that's all right, because that just helps to get the, the, the video out there, the, the stream out there for other people to, to see. Um, so are there any questions that we have at this stage? I'm going to edit, be more, editing more images, going through the same process, but let's just see what we've got here. Um, oh, greetings from Mauritius. So I'm going, I'm, I'm going to struggle to pronounce your name, unfortunately. So please accept my apologies, but I'll have a go. Musafar, uh, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Uh, Mark's also just said, yeah, Lightroom is by far the most powerful and easiest to learn too. I, well, I'm going to say I agree. I do agree, but I've not really experimented with, with other software. The only two pieces of editing software that I use are Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, so I'm, it's a bit unfair for me to probably say that I, I agree because I've not experimented with mainly Capture One. However, I love Lightroom. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and it's like with anything, once you get used to it, it really does become like intuitive. Um, Siebel's asked, do you change your brush flow and feather settings when you're using your highlight brush? No, not really, no. As, as um, Siebel's actually a member of my Patreon. So if you if you go into the Patreon, Siebel, and, and watch the 70-minute the video which, um, which is in there, I, I talk you through how I created these brushes and why I use the settings that I do. But I have a big feather on my brush because I don't want the edge of the brush to be very contrasty. The bigger the feather is, the less you're going to be able to see the join of the brush. So that just means that you don't have to like spend a lot of time trying to be very accurate. And as you can see here, when, I, um, when I'm editing, I'm, I, it can be quite quick. Um, question here from, from David. How do we get the presets if we're not part of the Patreon group? Good question, thank you. There are two options. One is to, and both links for both of these options are, are, in, the, um, are in the description. You can either buy them direct off my website. So there's a PayPal button on there. I will then send you a personal email afterwards once that's, once that's gone through and I'll, I'll email you the presets. Not only though do you receive the presets, but you will also receive that access to a 70 minute video in which I go through it, lots of images and I got talking you through why I set the presets up like I do um, and then the the brushes as well and I then basically edit about 50 images live on that um, on that video and talk you through the process time and time again so by the end of that video um, I always say that like the, 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 that video is like the instruction manual to the presets. Um, so please do watch the instruction manual because that will then show you the, the exact way that I edit and it will show you the process that I go through time and time again. And by the end of that video, I'm not going to say it's the most exciting video in the world, but by the end of that 70 minutes, you'll know exactly how I edit and then you can take that workflow into your own images and then you, you know, you'll, you'll fly then. So yeah, so you'll, you'll get the presets, the brushes, and the 70 minute video, but the, the video is just as important as the preset because as I said at the very beginning of the stream, no preset in the world will ever give you what you want with one click. Some people may say that they can, they, they can't, trust me, they can't. You have to have a process and that is what the video shows you. So, cool, okay, we'll go back to Lightroom now. Let me just close that um, and go to here. So hopefully we're back in Lightroom. Let's go to another image now. I'm gonna go to an image where I can show you a few of the different brushes in, in actually let's go to this one very quickly. Again, if, if I can ask you, so I just go on like a broken record, but if you don't mind just hitting the like button, please, that would be really appreciated. So again, just another image. Um, again, I've just got due to a bit of rejigging with my, <laughs> the windows that are all open all over my screen. Right, so this was taken on the Sony. Uh, so you'll see here as well, you know, the raw files that I take, let's just fly through some of them. These are all straight out of camera, nothing applied. You know, I'm not, nothing particularly special about them. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing hugely different, you know, there's nothing probably with a lot of these, these are shots that maybe many of us would take. It's also a bit, bit daunting showing everyone the raw files, but my channel is always about openness and honesty and transparency so this is literally what my images look like straight out of camera um i don't pretend that they are 
exactly where I want them to be straight off. That, that they rarely ever are. Well, they never are. Let's be honest. Um, but I, I try and get as much right in camera as I can, and then I'll I'll use the preset to get them to where I want to go. So let's just go back to this one. Um, first of all, I'm going to apply my main preset because the light in this is good. So Sony Color main preset. Now global changes again. For me, global changes are often white balance exposure. So let's go to white, because to me it's a bit cool, this. It's a bit too cold. So let's just warm, warm this one up. I like my, my images to look warmer than reality. So certainly warmer than, than the camera's also setting. I shoot in manual white balance, um, usually on my Sony, around 5,500 Kelvin. When I was shooting on Nikon, it was about 6,000 Kelvin, which is warmer than auto, because I just think that images look nicer when that little bit warmer. If you want a go-to setting, rather than having to dial in the, the Kelvin manually, my advice is go to cloudy on your camera. Cloudy is warmer than auto. Um, so with this one, yeah, we're just gonna bump up the white balance as we've done. And I think global changes wise, it's a bit too bright as well. So I'm just gonna bring down the exposure this time. We'll go about there. Now, a couple of things that I want to do with this, and because I've, I've you know, so sort of like used to shooting the way that I do, when I, when I open an image in Lightroom, I already know exactly what it is I want to do with it. It's just like a reflex. And with this, I think, right, I want to just make the sky a bit punchier, but more so I want to bring back that reflection in the bottom half of the photograph a little bit more because this photograph for me, I took this, the composition, um, because I wanted the reflection in there. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that with brushes. You'll notice as well, that I never change the settings of the brushes. Once they're, now that they're dialed in, I never go back to them. It's just far easier that way. All I do is change the strength of them. So for the first time on this stream anyway, let's let's introduce a, a new brush called Mr. Blue Sky, ELO song. Brilliant song, by the way. I'm sure lots of you know it. I always want to sing that song once I um, click on that, but I'm not gonna subject you to that, don't worry. Uh, plus I get copyright strikes. Right, so let's just do this. There we go, and as you see, all that's done, it's just made the sky punchier really quickly. But I, what I also want to do is bring back the reflection. So for this, I'm going to, this time I'm gonna use a gradient um, filter. Now what gradient filters do is they just will, in, well basically they'll, they'll allow you to put a line on your photograph and that line will be starting off strong and it will graduate away so that the effect that you're you're applying just sort of gets weaker as you go so let's just um so oh sorry not mr blue sky i want to do this with um bring it back so bring it back it's just going to basically as a kickoff it's going to bring back the detail areas so let's just do that, the shadow areas rather. So you can see, that's all it's done. Now again, we can change the power of that. Do I want to bring back the shadow, the reflection a little bit more? Yeah, let's do that. Let's bring it back a little bit more. We can do that, and that's it. So again, very, very quickly, we've gone from there, just looks a bit flat, to there. Just an image that just has more punch about it. Ooh, first dislike on the stream. And that must be from the developers of um, Capture One. So let's now just go to another image. Uh, we'll go to this one, because this is one where we can we can let loose a bit on this. So again, out of camera, nothing special. It, it's a, it, but I know when I, take, when I took this, I knew what the potential was going to be in this photograph. Um, so I'm just gonna edit this one. In the meantime, any questions you may have, please pop, pop them into the um, into the chat and because after this one I'm going to break off and we'll answer some questions um, so any questions at all you have about my presets about Lightroom please just pop them in the chat and I'll answer them in a second so with this one this was taken on the Sony the light is is where I want it to be so main preset so that's where we go here but with, there's quite a lot we can do with this photograph so global changes wise I can already see in the histogram from what I remember I said before I want the, the the data to go the full way from left to right in the histogram so that says to me I can pull back the blacks we've got this gap over here so let's do that about here now we are losing detail here in the couple usually that is something that I would try and avoid because again for images that where you lose the detail, if you were to print them, you can get away with it on a computer screen, but if you were to print those images, 
it, you will see a quite. It's going to look a bit rubbish, to be honest, because it's going to be just pure black, and it doesn't look great in a print. So if you're offering albums to your couples, try not to lose detail in either the shadows or the highlights. Now with this one, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that because it's a silhouette, and personally for me, silhouettes look best when the contrast is very high. So I don't mind the couple being in complete shadow because. As I say, it's a silhouette photograph, but usually I would try and avoid that, but I'm gonna let that slide for this photograph. We've also got a gap on the right-hand side as well. That means to me, we can push up the whites. I might also just push up the overall exposure slightly, but let's push up the whites even more. Right, now we can, so that's it. Global changes are done. Oh, actually, no, let's, let's bring up the white balance as well, I think. We'll go about here. So that's the global change is done. Now we're gonna to go to our brushes again. Right, couple of things we can do here. First of all, I'm going to use the brush that we used at the beginning in the first photograph, Golden Gaze. Again, what this does is it's going to warm up the, the warm light that is already there. If you have no warm light, it's not going to create warm light, but it's going to accentuate and really embellish the warm light that is always there. So we just do this, so there you go. See how it just warms everything up really easy. We've also got a little bit of blue in the sky. So again, that means that I can use our brush, Mr. Blue Sky. So let's go to new, Mr. Blue Sky. Let's make our brush a little bit bigger and let's just go over there. There we go, really, really easy. What I can also do here, I think, is, is use another new brush, um, which I'll show you, I'll demonstrate this in a second in a better way but I'm gonna use one called Bokeh Brush. And as the name suggests, that's going to bring um, up the bokeh. Because we've got little bits of sort of out of focus foreground here, which we can make punchier. So I'm gonna use this in the form of a gradient filter. So you see how it just brings out a little bit more. Now I'm also, this, what I'm doing with this photograph is adding over more of the brushes on top of each other. I'm gonna to go to new, and I'm also gonna apply Mr. Blue Sky to the bottom half of the picture as well. So let's just do that, because I think that, will work well. See how it's going, to bring, it's going to introduce in a bit of purple, which I think looks quite cool. There we go. I might also use bring it back as well, just to bring back some of the shadows a little bit. So we can just keep on um, using these filters on top of each other, but not quite as strong. I'm going to drop the power of that to about there. Now, one last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring back the sky slightly. As the name suggests, that's going to be another bring it back. And that's going to just put more punch. I want to just increase the... That is strange. Oh, my fault. That's strange. Very strange. Let's just um, go into here and we're just going to just bring that back more. That's why I'm using the wrong brush. This is what happens when you're live streaming. <laughs> I should be using one called um, Burn. Don't even know my own presets. Right, so let's go to burn and let's just bring that down. There we go. Burn is basically just bringing down the shadow areas. So it's not affecting the highlights and the whites, just the shadow areas. So we've gone for there and let's add, I don't really add vignettes very often, but let's do that uh, just for this one. There we go. So again, You'll see there that all I've done is apply my base preset, global changes, and then use the brushes. And we've gone from there to there. Now, I was doing that whilst talking to people on a live stream. If you used to do that, you know, once you're actually concentrating and you're not on YouTube live, you can do that in 30 seconds, 40 seconds, something like that. It doesn't take long at all. But once you get used to using the process, again, let me say again how important the process is, then you'll be able to fly with this. And again, what I want you to see here is that the preset didn't do that. The brushes did that. So that is why the process is so important. And it's why I get annoyed when, pe when people try and sell presets based on a one-click process. It, should, it will not work. Um, so let's just go back and see if we have any questions. Let's go up here. 
Well, 48 people watching. Thank you very much. Again, if you've just joined, please, can you hit the like button? I'd really appreciate that, please, because it just gets it out there, as I think it's proving, because we're up to 51 now. So let's see if we can get, can we hit 40 likes? That would be amazing, if that's all right, please. That would be, um, be really good. And as I say, we, we're going to um, introduce more images in a second. going to see what questions we have. <laughs> David, sunny sign in the sky. Yeah, it's a brilliant song, isn't it? Um... Hi, hi, Anu from India. It's amazing. We've got India, Mauritius, LA, Ireland, Runcon. <laughs> um, oh, thank you very much for the kind comments. Um, right, again, apologies for the pronunciation here. Uh, Raful says, hi, I just wanted to know how much negative space is acceptable in photography, as we know that many photographers hate so much negative space because they say it reduces the focus of the subject. That is a, is a good question, but it's a completely subjective. Please, right, you've made a point there. I think the bigger point in your question is not about the negative space, the way that I, that I when I read that question, you've mentioned what other photographers say. Get that out of your mind. All that matters is what you like. I always, always stress to people to develop your own style and go with your gut instinct. If you take a photograph and think, I really like that, something inside of me says that works and you like it. And then the next person looks at that and says, don't like that, it's too much negative space. Try to go with your own gut instinct. Don't try and change your opinion because somebody else has a different opinion to you. So the answer, how much negative space should you have in a photograph, really is something that only you can answer because it all depends on you. Because everybody's taste is different, everybody's style is different. But if we all shot the same way and all listen to the rules and only shot the same way, Photography will be boring. The reason that photography is so good is because it allows us to be artistic and edit images in the way that we like and create images in the form that we like. So it's a good question, but there is no right or wrong. It really depends on what you like yourself. Um, I hope that helps. Hi from, oh wow, Houston, Spain. We are all over the place. Netherlands, thank you so much for joining everyone. I really appreciate it. Very kind of you. Um, right, let's go back to Lightroom. I don't think, unless anybody has any other questions, we'll go and we'll edit another couple of images. Let me just turn this off. Thank you for all the likes as well. I really appreciate it. It's very kind of you all. Right, let's go back here. Excuse me not being that fast at this. It's all pretty tricky when you're trying to do a lot of things at the same time. Right, so, in fact, let's just make that go. Ah, oh, I can change the size of some of these windows. That definitely helps. Right, let's go to this one now. Again, hopefully you see in Lightroom. Remember to keep on putting your questions in the chat. I will always keep on stopping to answer the questions. So this was taken on my Sony. Again, out of camera raw file, nothing special, let's be honest. Um, this was taken on my 135, wide open at 1.8. So what I'm gonna do first of all is apply my Sony preset um, and the main preset as well, because the light is good. So let's apply that. Again, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but I think it's always important to say that is the first step of a process. That is not the end. If it was, it's not going to look anywhere near as good as it could do. So that's just the first step. Let's now make some global changes. What I'm going to do is warm up these images. Let's go pretty warm for this, I think. Again, it, again, it's up to you. There is no right place to, to change, to, to sort of stop when it comes to warming up or cooling down our images. We all have different tastes and, and whatever, what I like may not be what you like. And that is cool. There is no right or wrong. I always want to sort of stress that. Right, so we've done that. And that's probably all I would do for global changes. Now I know there's more that I want to do with this photograph, but for global changes, for part two, that's fine. So let's now go to our brushes. And with this one, first of all, I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to apply the faces brush because that is going to just increase the exposure on the couple. Is that too much? It's up to you. We can just change that. Put it about there, I think. Now let's, in, we're going to do two things now. First one, I'm going to use a new brush. I'm going to go to Golden Gaze, which is just going to warm up that already nice light. There we go. It's warming up the light and it's softening the light. 
that's all we need to do. And let's also use a bokeh brush. I think the background here, it's really cool. It's got like, because I've shot it at 1.8, it's very punchy, there's lots of bokeh in the background and I want to accentuate that, I want to bring out that punchiness. So let's go to new, bokeh brush, and let's just make that a bit punchier, like that. Now we could try and bring back our highlights, but I suspect that they're lost in this one. Um, so let's go to save highlights. They actually do come back, so we'll go with that. Let's bring back those up here as well. If you try and bring back highlights sometimes where where you can't really bring them back, it doesn't look great because basically you're competing against too bright a light source. And if you try and bring them back, it looks awful. So let's just leave that. Now we've got a tiny gap on the left-hand side of the histogram, so that means global changes. Let's just drop down the black slightly to make it punchier. Again, that's all I would do. So we've gone for, in this example, We've gone from there to there really, really quickly. David says, love this demo of, thank you very much, David. I really appreciate that. It's an absolute pleasure. I love doing stuff like this. You know, like, um, it's, it's not work for me. I really enjoy it. Um, we've got a couple of questions here. So let's just, um, answer those. Oh, I've lost um, the, que the questions. Right, here we go. Um, question here from Mark. Oh yeah, thank you, Mark. I, I, again, uh, I hope that answer did help you um, Raffle, like I said before, but I just, I just really don't like people, like other photographers, what I call shudding on other photographers. Like you should do this, you should do that. You know, this is right, that's wrong. I, I, I just don't believe in that. Um, so um, <laughs> David says, off topic question, but what music do you listen to when editing? Good question, I, I always do. I listen to either music or podcasts. Um, music wise, I, I, if it depends what mood I'm in. If it's daytime stuff, then uh, Oasis, Cortinas, Stone Roses, indie stuff basically. Um, I'm mainly from Manchester. And um, if it's more nighttime stuff, I like listening to Damien Rice at the moment. I mean, I've, I've loved Damien Rice for years. Um, I've got into, I loved O, oh, his first album, but he's, he's um, I say his latest album, it's still like six, seven years old now, but. Um, favorite Fadey's fantasy is incredible if you've not listened to anyone on the if anyone watching this hasn't listened to Damien Rice give him a listen he's, he's a genius um so um Peter says how do you remember which presets you apply to an image I don't really re ever remember what I've applied to an image once I've edited it but it's just when I look at, because I'm so used to using my presets now and I've understood the process and I um you know, I use the same presets all the time. I've, I've, I only ever use my own presets. I, I only have used my own presets for years and years. So I open up an image and I just know what I want to do with it. It's, it's sort of like become second nature. And that's why I said before that um, the process is important because the more, especially in that 70 minute video that I spoke about before, the more I, re I show you the process over and over and over again, then you'll start to get, you know, the same sort of understanding. And it, you'll get to a point where you open up a raw file and it's like, right, I want to apply Faces brush, I want to apply the bokeh brush, bit of burn there, you know, and it, it just becomes so second nature. Um, Jerry Cinnamon, good shout, Carl. Um, Sandy says, would your presets do a matte effect? I know that's not your style, but it's ours. I don't know. I I'm going to say, being honest, probably not. No, because I don't think you can, you can take a preset that is designed for punchy contrast the image and just hope that it works in another style but how it, I mean give them a try but I don't know if they would I'm going to say no if I'm being honest um that you cannot easily change the presets you know you can develop your own or you you know if you wanted if you were wanted to um, experiment with mine have a play with them you can just update them make your own changes and just just resave over mine if that's what you wanted to do but mine are to be honest, that they're designed for punchy clarity, uh, punchy, contrasty, vibrant sort of look. Um, Drum in Spain, <laughs> cool name. Have you done an episode on the focus system on the A9? When it works, it's superb. But sometimes mine doesn't focus when I want to keep tracking mode. Uh, 
I've not done anything on my YouTube channel. However, let me just break off for a second and talk about my Patreon because I've got a couple of things here. The Patreon, if you're not aware, it's like the, it's like my YouTube channel, but it's like it's the membership area. Um, so you basically pay a monthly fee to join the Patreon, and you get loads of benefits. So let me just show you like um, some of the the benefits of joining. Um, and this is because you've asked that question because it, uh, it does it does answer it well. By joining the Patreon, this is what you'll get. First of all, you'll, if you join, even if you only join for one month, which in England is like for £6.95, you will instantly get access to 100 plus hours of content. Everything that I've created in the Patreon becomes instantly available to you as soon as you join. And that is, I don't know how many videos now, I think probably 40 or 50 videos. Here's some of, some of the thumbnails. And in there, this one over here, if you can see my mouse moving, in that live stream, I spoke about my camera settings and how I set my camera up to shoot basically so that that video will answer your questions that's available within the patreon there's also th live streams every single month you can download my presets for free so if you go to the patreon and download the presets it's only going to cost you six pound 95 um there's exclusive videos you get membership of a facebook group and, and the the group is amazing and it's it becomes such a good community um and then there's loads and loads as well of industry expert live streams you can watch. So these are two hour plus live streams where we've had guests on, Magmod Ambassadors, SEO experts, David Press Photographer, amazing live stream, Dave Stanbury, Nadine joined us this week, gave us an amazing live stream all about sales and converting inquiries into bookings. Absolutely mind blowing. Um, Chris Garbach, the creator of Studio Ninja, Say Scott um, Joes White, Magmod Ambassador, Arnold de Brown, Magmod Ambassador, Marlies Hartman, Magmod Ambassador, Adam, an amazing videographer. There's so much information in the Patreon. I pro it is incredible. And I say, even if you give it a go for one month, you will definitely, definitely find so much value in there. Absolutely promise you. Uh, but let's go back to Lightroom now. So, but, so there is a video in there for you. Um, so let's just go back here. Let's edit another couple of images now. Right, let's go to let's go to this one. Well, let me just turn this off. Right, so this one was taken on my Nikon. So let's go to Nikon main preset. Now that one out of the box is all over the place. And again, this is why you can't just expect a preset to do the job for you because look at that, it looks awful. However, the detail is all there. So let's just, let's go through this one. First of all, global changes. Obviously, I want to bring down the exposure. It's way too bright out of the box. We'll go to about there, I would say. Let's also bring down the white balance a little bit. It's very warm out of the box. Let's put it about there. So, as it stands, it's better, but it's a bit flat. But that's all I'm gonna do for global changes. The histogram is looking fairly good, actually. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. So let's go to our brushes again. Now, there was a question before, how do you remember what presets you use? Without even, well, this I, I am now editing on autopilot, because I know I want to introduce the, the bokeh brush here and down here. I'm also going to want to bring in the burn brush to sort of like burn in the shadow areas a bit more. And I'm gonna use the golden gaze brush just to bring the warm light down. So it becomes so instinctive. So let's go to, first of all, the bokeh brush. And let's go over this. So already we've got more punch. And again, if you want to increase the power of that, we can just do that there. So there we go. If you want to increase it even more, just click on new and go over the same area again. Right, and then I'm gonna use the burn brush. So new burn, just to really hammer home the contrast and just, it's almost like you can create a natural vignette. Let's do that. And now I'm gonna use the gradient tool to use golden gaze and let's bring in warm light like that there we go so very quickly again i should in, actually bring up the very quickly there we've gone from there to there now again if you want to change any of this it's really easy obviously we can just go back we can change the power of this but if that, you know, whatever you want to do, this one I'm really desperate. I need to crop in. We haven't done any cropping yet, but that's I don't like that white highlight at the top. Again, to me, that's distracting. Um, could also, if you wanted to here, introduce a vignette to make it a bit punchier. Again, before 
after. But you see then, um, it takes it takes no time. Again, let me keep on saying, I'm, I'm doing this on a, on a YouTube live stream, which is not easy. So, you know, you could do that in 30 seconds. Because, you, but again, let me keep on saying, it's because you, you have to learn the process. But again, it, once you've learned that. Uh, I'm going to do one more, then we'll do a black and white one. Right, let's go to... Let's go to this one. I really like this photograph and I could kick myself that I shot it so bad in camera. Not the setting, but the actual um, composition. This was at the very end of a wedding day. I'm, I'm going to give myself the excuse that I was tired, but but I'm all over the shop. So apologies, Sammy and James, for that. <laughs> but but we can improve it with a crop. So let's, uh, first of all, this time I'm going to increase, in, I'm going to use the lifting shadows preset because the, the the shadows are very dark in this so let's just introduce that one again let's let's go to now our global changes let's go up here and before we do anything else i think that's all i'm going to do for global changes but i, I need to crop this again this is very much warts and all this is the, rea the reality this is not what you end up seeing on a slideshow but this is how um how it was shot in camera i am lying on the floor I shouldn't be because I had the flippy screen, but yeah. Right, so a couple of things we're going to do here. Let's now use the golden gaze brush to warm up the light of the candles and the, and the lights on the building. So let's go to brush, new, golden gaze already selected. Okay, it's going to warm up that light like that. And it's also going to make that light soft and it's going to give like a nice haze to that light as well. We've got a bit of blue in the sky there, so let's introduce Mr. Blue Sky. Let him help us out there just to give that sky a bit more punch. Now, if you ever want to see, by the way, what you've actually gone over, if you press O on the keyboard, it will go red. And you can see, let's click on this brush, for example, and you can see where I painted. You'll see that I'm not being accurate, but it's it's uh, you don't need to be because the feather is the brush is so, is so big. Um, I'm going to introduce now the faces brush a little bit on, on the couple, just to bring them up slightly. Is that too much? Yeah, a little bit. So let's just drop the power down. There we go. And I'm going to burn in the bottom half. There's a bit, this could be a bit better. So let's go to new, burn with the, sorry, gradient filter, it should have been, just to bring those back. And that's it. So again, we've gone from there to there. But the difference is huge between the raw file and the end result. Let's just see how we're doing for questions. Thank you very much, Carl. Carl for recommending the Patreon. I really appreciate that. He's been a member since June or July. Yeah, one of um, one of the OGs. Thank you very much, Carl. Um, question, um, uh, Pete. Peter, like there has a history tab in develop mode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. That's, a, sorry, a good point. You can always go back. I'll, sh I'll demonstrate that here and look at exactly what you've done. Literally an archive of, of everything you've done to that image. And if you click on any of these, it will take you back in time to that point. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Mark, for pointing that out. That's, um, I should have mentioned that. Thank you. Um, Naveen says, how to expect the tone when we look at the picture? I'm, I'm not sorry, Naveen, it's probably me being daft, but I don't, I don't know quite what you mean. So if you just let me know again in the comments. Um, Ryle, uh, Raffle says, thanks a lot. I would love to know your photography journey in summary. Is it possible in your favorite photographers right now who inspired you the most? Good question. Let's just break off for a second. I'll answer that. So first of all, there is a video on my YouTube channel which is all about how I started off in wedding photography. Um, I can't remember exactly when that was from. I think it's a couple of years old now, that video. But if you go back, it's called How I Became a Wedding Photographer. That's about half an hour of me telling you exactly how I started off in wedding photography. So that will answer all your questions um, in terms of how I started off. And in terms of who are my favorite photographers, um, for me, the, the best in the world, and I've said this many, many times, are two-man studios, Lanny and Erica. Um, their work is stunning. I've been lucky enough to be on their workshop and I learned so much from them. They're the nicest people in the world as well. So yeah, two-man studios 
are incredible. If you're not familiar with them, definitely go on and check them out. Their work is just insane. Um, and they offer a lot of like training as well, which is, is, is brilliant. I say, I've been on their three-day workshop, learned load from it. So yeah, two man, always my go-to answer for whenever he says like, who are your favorite wedding photographers? Um, but I also as well, slightly on a different, for different reasons, love the work of Tyler Working. Tyler is a docu purely documentary wedding photographer. His background is in photojournalism, and I love his sort of ethos to, about wedding photography. Um, I've learned so much from him in terms of how to approach a wedding day and how to improve the documentary side of my work. So yeah, they're, they're my two go-to answers, Two Man and Tyler. They're, they're both amazing in slightly different ways but definitely like check them both out their work is, is incredible um so yeah uh, oh thank you very much matt i really appreciate that um i won't mention that again again you know we've already spoke about that a little bit but if you want to see what i'm referring to read matt's comments very kind of him um so we're going to go back to again i know i've said this loads of times if you don't mind just hitting the like button i'd really appreciate that if that's okay please so the like button is just underneath this video. Let's go back to Lightroom. Again, remember to keep on getting your questions in. I'll be on live for probably like another hour, I would say, at the most. Um, so please do let me know if you have any questions. Um, right, let's go back into here. What I'll also do is I'm going to flick through some of these raw files. If there's any raws here that you look at that you'd want me, because I'm not going to have time to edit them all, that you'd like me to edit, please just, just let me know and we'll go back and we'll edit that one. Oh, I'm going to do a, black, a couple of black and whites now. We haven't done anything black and white yet. So it's going to just fly through these again. Hopefully, well, it, I hope that you can tell the ones that I've already edited and which ones are raw files. But it's a, a big right. Thank you for the likes, everyone. We're up to 50 now. That's amazing. Right, so let's go. We'll go to this one for a black and white. Because I like my, I like, when I, I don't, I don't tend to edit all that many shots in black and white, but if a shot is, has got lots of emotion in it, especially like, you know, tears and things like that, then that they're the ones that I love to be in black and white. This one, for example, I, I love the expression on, on the bride's face here, on Faye's face. It's just, it's, um, it says so much, like happiness, emotion. You can see that she's got slight tears in her eyes. It's, it's, I love it. It's, and this is why we do wedding photography, isn't it? For moments like this. It, 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 when you're in this position and you're taking a photograph like this, you feel it. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just the best job in the world when we're looking to be in this. But anyway, this for me is a good candidate for a black and white photograph. Now, if we look at the preset pack, we've got two options over here for the presets when it comes to black and white. We've got black and white, the standard black and white that I use, or black and white faces. And the, the only real difference between those two black and white presets is the clarity. Because again, if I, I don't want, the, uh, if, I'm, if I'm editing a photograph with faces, which are very prominent, obviously in this case, face, face is very prominent in the frame, then I don't want the clarity to be pushed up because it's not very flattering. So that's why I've created the faces black and white preset. So I want to use that. And again, we're going to go for the same process. Again, out of the box, it's not quite there because obviously it's, it, to my mind, it's too overexposed. So I'm going to bring down globally the exposure. We'll go to about here. We now, that's all I'm going to do. So all I need to do for, um, for our global changes so actually, I'm going to bring these back in. So I have these ticked, by the way, so you can see if I've ever lost detail like that. Because if you do, that's my little uh, rule to, to go back and bring those back. Same with the highlights and the whites. You know, that area of red, we see that because this box up here is ticked. So if I ever see any red, that means go back and sort that out. So let's put that down to about there. So, so now let's go into... So I can't remember where it was out of the box. So I'm going to apply the preset again. So global changes about there. Right. Let's now go to our selective changes. So to the brushes. This is stage three. Again, I need to do a couple of things. Remember at the beginning of the stream, if you were if you had joined us at that point, I want to make the part of the photograph that I want your eye to look at the brightest part of the photograph, if I can. And in this example, I want you to look at bright uh, Faye's face and her eyes. But the moment they're not the brightest part of the photograph, her dress is. So I want to bring back the highlights of the dress. I can do that either by using a brush or a gradient filter. I'm going to use a gradient filter and I'm going to select save highlights. 
And all I need to do is just drag up. There we go, that easy. Do I want, is, is that too strong? Maybe a little bit, let's just lower the power of it slightly. We'll go to about there. Don't need to do much. And now I want to introduce the faces brush um, over face face. We're gonna go to new, brushes, faces. Let's just go make our brush a little bit bigger. And let's just go over. You see I'm mainly concentrating there on the left hand side as we look at it of face face because her right hand side has already got a bit more light on it. So we just, that's all we need to do. And I might also here introduce the burn brush just to burn, just to sort of give a more of a natural vignette. So let's go to new, burn. Let's make the brush a bit bigger and let's just very quickly just sort of naturally go around and introduce a bit more of a vignette. Maybe even go a bit there. There we go, that's, that's it. And there is where I've just sort of painted over. Um, and you can see the area by pressing O on the keyboard. This is very annoying up here, this top left. This isn't to do with the presets. We can either crop that out or we can use the spot removal tool. So with this, we can, if we want to just use that, um, the spot removal tool, let's add the brush there. Feather, probably about you know somewhere mid, midway, 100% opacity. And let's just go over that area and see what job Lightroom does. Hopefully, it's, yeah, it's done a fairly good job. Not the best job actually. So what? that's because the brush was too big. So let's just look, make the brush a bit smaller. Just, and there we just do that. Oh, this, this is where Photoshop is much better. It's not bad, it's actually a bit rubbish. Um, we, we could just burn that in more. Let's go to burn, make the brush go a bit smaller. That will get rid of it. But what I'm also gonna do is probably just crop in. But that's, that's all I would do for that image. The histogram is looking good. We've got detail across the whole way from left to right. Now we have, we have lost a tiny bit, I don't know if you can see here, we have a tiny bit of detail down here. You, if you're looking at this on a computer screen, it's not gonna make any difference. But if you wanted to print this, it's not ideal. So just to sort of give you good habits, let's go to our brushes again, new, bring it back. And all that's gonna do is just slightly bring back this, that, that lost detail, there we go, and then it's gone. That's, that's it, it takes two seconds. And there is our before and after. Let's go, go to, we'll do another black and white one. Let's go to a similar shot, which, which, which is up here somewhere. Let's go to another one of my favorites. Let's, we'll go to this one. This was an amazing wedding, which I photographed two, getting on for two years ago now. Obviously last year <laughs> didn't do many. Um, this was a brilliant day. Um, such a nice couple. And there's a behind the scenes of this particular wedding on my YouTube channel, um, where you see it's a, a big Indian wedding, a Hindu wedding, you can go back and, and watch that. Um, but yeah, I love this one, again, because Ojas's eyes a bit glassy, you know, there's emotion there. So again, this is another good candidate for me to use the black and white faces brush. So we'll just do that. Global changes, everything's a bit too bright. Let's just bring it down. First of all, let's um, apply the faces brush. So new, faces. Not much, just gonna bring out the shadows a little bit. That's all we probably need to do. So I've only gone over there, just over the eyes a little bit. I'm now gonna introduce the burn brush in the form of a radial filter. So let's go to there, burn. And what this will do is it's going to affect everywhere outside of the circle that I draw. So you see it's just brought back the, the um, underexposed, the other areas. That's all I would need to do. And now what I'm gonna do, lastly, is just, we've just lost that little bit of detail in Ojas's hair. So let's go to new, and let's select, bring it back. And literally nothing more than going over, why can I not see, that's weird. Oh. I'm in radial filter, that's why. Let's go to brush, sorry, and bring it back and just go over there, done. So we've now gone from there to there. Cool, so let's just break off, see the comments again. Again, I'm really hoping this is useful. If there's anything that I'm not doing that you want to see, please let me know. What I'm, hope, what I'm trying to do here is, is two things. I'm, I'm trying to demonstrate how I edit in Lightroom 
and also that this is not long what once you get the process down it's it's really easy um and you can edit really quickly and i hope that's coming across um Oh, thank you very much, Paul. Welcome to Paul. Well, welcome, Paul, to the Patreon. Thank you very much for joining. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Sandy. I appreciate that. Sandy likes a picture that looks like, like in black and white. Um, thank you, Paul. I have. I have. All I've done is stopped eating chocolate and lowered down the, the, the amount of food that I'm eating for, for my tea, basically. So rather than having like huge portions, just making it smaller. So thank you for noticing. <laughs> Um, Aperture, um, can ISO 64 on a Nikon, um, I want to say Z6, that shows how much YouTube I watch on a, on a Nikon Z7 with shutter speeds of 200 and desktop of 10 with studio lights at half power cause the picture to lose sharpness. No, no. Honestly, I, again, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I don't get hung up on ISO, is it sharp? Like, it's boring. So, sorry, a bit flippant. Basically, I don't worry about and my images, I'm got, I don't zoom into my images to 400% and think, what's the difference between ISO 100 and ISO 400? Like, get your microscope out. It's, life's too short. So it, it will be sharp. It will be sharp. Um, the only way that that wouldn't be sharp, I mean, if you're using, if you're in a studio, you're shooting at F10 at 200 at ISO 64, that, it, th it, theoretically, that's like the best settings you can you could get. I'm guessing that the reason you've asked that is at 64 is probably in that like low, that sort of area where it says don't go there. And it sort of like changes on the, the back of your camera. But in reality, you know, you, you're going to be completely fine. Um, thank you, David, as well for joining. I appreciate that. The presets are now yours to download. Just make sure that you please do that before February ends because that's when I'll, I'll be closing it off. The video will always remain live, though, so you know. The 70-minute tutorial video um, will always be live in the Patreon. It's just that the, 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 the presets won't be there to download at, from March onwards, but you've got plenty of time. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope that you're going to get lots of value from it. As I say, we do live streams all the time. We've got a live stream next week with um, Tanya Parada, who is an amazing photographer based in Los Angeles. She's a MagMod ambassador, and she's going to be showing, tell, talking to us about how she took some of her favorite photographs. So that's going to be a really good one. The live streams are all done on Zoom. So it's literally, I always say at the beginning of the stream, it's like we're all just sat around a table in a pub, just having a chat, and you can just jump in, ask questions and things like that. Um, they're really good, and that's where the community is, is built in uh, on those live streams. So if you can, I'd really recommend sort of taking the time to try and join one of the live streams if you get a chance, because they're really, really good. Um, and please watch back the older ones as well. Now that you've joined, you're going to get instant access to to all of the past live streams. And he's over. I think he's thirty live. Oh, twenty nine live streams so far, um, and you can watch them all back. Um, but I say we we do we do three a month. Um, at least one of those is with a wedding industry expert where you can just jump in and ask questions. And as, as I said, like it's it could just because it's fresh in my mind, please watch the one that we did with Nadine um, this week, two days ago, Nadine Van um, Billion. It was mind-blowing, all about sales. And it, it was just such an eye-opener. I learned so much from that stream. So yeah, that's available to rewatch. But but please do watch that one. It, it will blow your mind. Um so let's go back now to, to Lightroom. Do, do, do. Right. Let's do another, let's do a color one. Oh, that's, I'll tell you what. Let's do a black and white one where we're not using the faces black and white because I've used everything. So let's go to, we'll go to this one. So this, again, out of camera, way underexposed. But I'm doing that. The reason that, I mean, this is all, if I just increase before doing anything, let's just show you what's going on here. The reason that I underexposed this so much is because I didn't want to lose highlights in the bride's dress. So you've always got to bear that in mind that even if your subject is over here, if you expose for, if I was to expose for this little boy's face, the bride's dress, because it, with it being so much brighter than, than his skin, is going to blow out and it's going, we're going to lose all the effect. So although it looked really underexposed, it's underexposed for a good reason, which is I wanted to retain details in the bride's dress. That's just like good practice. So let's, um, 
let's go back and let's first of all let's apply our normal black and white preset this time because although his face is pretty prominent in the frame um we can get away because it's not that big like the other ones were so again global changes and i'm just going to make the global changes looking at his face so about there looks good to me now we see because i brought up the exposure we've started to lose a bit of detail in in the bride's dress not going to be a problem though because we because we've shot it underexposed so let's go to we'll use our we'll use a radial filter this time and we're going to use save highlights again the invert box is unticked so what that means is let me just um apply this so it's affecting everywhere outside of that circle so that's good that's what we want if i click the the invert box it's affecting everywhere inside the circle that's not what we want so i'll make sure that is unticked so in other words it's bringing back the highlights of everywhere outside of that circle so let's just close that so that's good and we've the only other thing we need really need to, actually i think that's a bit too strong so i'm just going to go back to here and let's just weaken that slightly let's just turn that off so you can go all the way down here but we want to obviously put it about there because then then your eye now is looking at the boy's face when you first look at his photograph I'm going to go to new i just need to bring back some of the detail that we've just lost so let's go to bring it back and again just let's just whip over there it'll take seconds done so we've now not lost any detail at all in that raw file so when we print that out there's going to be no area of complete white and no area of complete black and that's good because that means that we've got detail the whole way across so then that's why what i'm trying to achieve in fact there's a little bit there we'll get rid of that so again with this one we've gone from there pretty awful out of camera but awful for a reason it had to be it had to look like that or else we're going to lose detail so that's the out that's the out of camera and that's the end result and remember we did that within seconds notice as well how little i'm changing the sliders and that's by design that's why i put a lot of effort into designing these presets so that you don't have to change the sliders all you'll need to do um, when it comes to the brushes is literally change the power that's at not one point in this stream have i changed any of the details of the sliders within the brushes all i've done is change the power so it, again it's more efficient this way um that bit is annoying so i'm going to crop out that little gap at the top we'll literally just do that done let's find another one this is an easy one to edit nice shot obviously taken at sunset again look how wonky i'm shooting this let's just straighten that up a little bit like that let's apply our preset this is in color so sony main preset let's increase global changes let's bring up the exposure i would say i mean there's not a huge amount i think we need to do with this i mean there's a gap now on the left hand side of the histogram so i'm going to bring that back to make it again that's going to make it punchier but i'm also going to incre increase the warmth of the light by using golden gaze let's go to gradient filter golden gaze and let's just drag that down and again it's up to you now where you want that to sit we can make it a little bit less i probably have it about there but we could make it go much stronger by going up here your call let's put i think about there though just it's all we're trying to do is just exaggerate the reality of that scene um so let's close that and again we've gone from there to there in a matter of seconds i'm just gonna look at the comments um thank you david again i really appreciate that um is that, is that Iron? Sorry. Again, I, I'm so off with names. Sorry. Iron or Ian, uh, thanks for your work. I'm working on a new on the new Lightroom on iPad and desktop, not on the classic one. Are the brushes working there? I'll be honest, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. I should know the answer to that. Maybe somebody in the chat can help. I, I feel bad, but I, I don't know, I'm afraid. I, w I will look into that, though. Um, I don't know the answer. Sorry. Um, and Cranthy. Oh, just hello. Hi from... Hyderabad, thank you very, very much for joining all the way from India. Really appreciate that. I have a lot of people um, who are, who uh, watch my YouTube videos from India. That's why I do the, I've done this stream a little bit earlier to try and cater for everyone because my two biggest audiences are not the UK where I'm based. The, the biggest audience are India and second is, is the US. So I'm trying to do the stream so that I, I can sort of cater for, for both of those um i hate when lightroom does that if you just hover over one of the presets it just um, does that let's go back to where we were there we go 
Let's choose another one. So we'll do this one of, of Georgie from a recent shoot that I did in the snow. Because this is going to be a nice quick edit. Um, so with this one, I could use either of the main two presets. Main or Lit in Shadow. If you ever just hover your mouse over, you'll get a little preview. I'm going to use the main preset for this one. I'm going to go this one really quick. Right, so let's, like, gap on the right hand side of the histogram. Let's push up the whites. These are global changes again, remember. Little tiny gap on the left. Let's bring down the shadow, the black, sorry, a little bit. Let's go to brushes now. Faces brush. Surprisingly, we're going to go over the face. Probably it, really. But re really quick. And we've gone from there to there. Now, one little thing to mention with this one. This was taken on my Sony A9, but I used the Canon 50mm 1.2, which is a beautiful lens for portraits. And I love using it because of the bokeh that it creates. It just throws out the foreground and the background so well. However, it's an old lens and the technology in that lens isn't ideal for shooting on a Sony. I use, by the way, the Sigma MC11 adapter. It works brilliantly. You can use eye autofocus with it. It just works really well. The, but you can see that you get fringing. Fringing is where you just see these sort of colors you see how got like this sort of area of magenta and it's just fringing basically because let's let's just go down to um sorry it where it's in detail sorry no it's not color correction it see we've got this d fringe here if we click up if we select that it's going to take away that sort of horrible magenta which um which is what we want. Let's take that away a bit more. So there we go. That's all we've got before and after. Really quick. Let's do another quick one. This one of Demi. So it's quite nice out of camera, this one. But let's... Um, thank you, Sandy. Oh, the, the faces brush I use all the time. Sandy very kindly just said that she loves the face brush and the golden one. Yeah, I, I'm really... The, the faces brush I've been using for years now. I've just adapted it slightly. Um, but the golden uh, the golden gaze brush is, um, is, is a relatively new one, but I, I'm very proud of it. it. It really works well. And what's been nice is in the Patreon Facebook group, a couple of members have been posting examples of where they've used them and it's, it's working well for them as well, which is really, really nice to see. So with this one, I'm going to apply now my main preset. Again... For me and my taste, I want what I want to do here is bring is readjust where the brightest part of this photograph is. At the moment, it's the veil, but I want it to be Demi's face. So I'm going to just do global changes again, first of all. Let's just drop down global changes. And I'm going to do two select. That's all I'm going to do. Two selective changes. So I'm going to go to, uh, first of all, save highlights. Let's just go over the veil. There we go, that easy. Again, remember, you can change the power of that if you want to, depending on where you want it to go. I reckon about there. Again, we want to make sure it looks natural. The moment it doesn't look natural, we've lost in the game of editing. Um, but I also want to bring up Demi's face slightly, so no prizes for guessing. That's gonna be the faces brush again. And I'm only gonna brush this over the right-hand side of Demi's face, because the left-hand side is in is more in light. Let's just do that. And a bit. let's go over her hair a little bit more as well. That is it. There to there. Takes seconds. So I think we don't think we have any other questions at the minute. Again, if I can just say well, how long we've got less than the stream, I'm going to probably go in for about another half an hour or so. So if you do have any questions, please jump in and ask. What I'm going to do now, actually, before we, we go back and have a chat, is I'm just, just in case anyone missed this one on the stream, because this is the one that people seem to like the edit of. So I'm going to reset this and edit this one. Now I'm going to edit it in real time. So I'm going to do less talking over this. But what I want you to see when I edit this is that all I'm doing is using the brushes, but I'm not changing the sliders. So let's apply our pre color preset. So I'm editing again using the histogram. So that's where I'm getting my reference points from. I'm almost not even looking at the photograph. I'm looking at the histogram. Let's bump up our exposure. About there. Let's go to our selective changes now. Feels weird when I'm not talking, but 
I just want to, I just want to try and get do this a bit quicker. Boker brush. Again, let's make it punchy. Mr. Blue Sky down there as well to make it purple. Again, I've got the song in my head. Right, and let's burn in the sky. And let's this time, actually, I'll, I'll push it up a little bit more, probably too far, because I am going to just add in that vignette again. Oh, I keep on closing it. There we go. So I'll try to do that more in real time for you. Right, let's just break off for a second and see what questions we have. Thank you, everyone, who's liked the stream so far. I really appreciate that. Um, again, if you don't mind, if you haven't done so so far, if you can just hit the like button, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. Let's just see what questions we've got now. Um, question from AD. Um, hello, so does your Lightroom presets come with develop modules or tools? No, my, my, my Lightroom presets are entirely independent from develops, who make fantastic presets, by the way. Um, but no, my, mine basically come... Man, are cheaper, much cheaper, especially if you get from the Patreon. Um, my, my presets basically come with um, two color presets, two black and white presets, but the main thing is the brushes and the video. And this is, let, let me talk, say this again in case everybody's joined the stream, because this is, this is a bugbear of mine. No presets that you ever buy will work out of the box with one click. It is impossible. The reason it's impossible is we all shoot differently. My raw files will look different to your raw files. So the preset is a starting point. Um, and if, if you ever buy a preset expecting to think, oh, let's just click that. I mean, just let me know yes or no in the chat. <laughs> this is an interesting experiment. Yes or no, if you've ever seen presets advertised with a before and after, and it's made you think that all you need to do is press one button, your image is going to look like that. I, I have. I've spent a lot of money on presets in the past thinking, I want my images to look like that. It's going to look amazing. And then you buy the preset, you hit the button, and it's like, oh, it's going to look so good. Oh, it looks awful. How often has that happened? It's happened to me many, many times. I've spent way too much money, more money than I want to admit on presets where I've thought that's going to happen. So my preset pack includes, again, two color presets, two black and white presets, seven brushes, but... Also, a 70-minute video where I talk you through exactly how I edit. I go through in detail what each brush does, all the sliders for those brushes. So if you want to change the sliders, you can change them, how to update those to make it suit your style more. But that video is the instruction manual. You have to, if you're going to buy presets, you have to have an instruction manual because otherwise they're not going to work. So this is why I say to everyone who buys the presets or downloads them, please take 70 minutes out of your life to watch that video because that video shows you exactly how to use them and that means that when you apply the preset you're going to be you're going to know what to do rather than be disappointed that it's not going to give you the look that you want straight out of the out of the um, out of the box so that is a really important thing that I always want to mention hi Tony you said I wish I'm not sure what your you wish that presets worked in one click I'm guessing yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, I could sit here and say that mine do. You know, buy my presets and look what you're going to get. And then move to Mexico and just um, follow up the business when everyone comes chasing after me with bad reviews. But I'm going to be honest. And I say, everything that about that I do on my channel is about transparency. I mean, wow, I'm showing you all my raw files here. You know, there, there, is, nothing, there is nothing left to... Um, there's nothing that I'm not showing you. Um, I'm trying to just close these, sorry. Um, let's go back to Lightroom. Yeah, I've shown you all these raw files. So there is nothing, there's nothing hidden. You know, I'm, I'm showing you exactly how I edit here, um, warts and all. So let's just, um, oh, um, Cran Theas said, can you show Indian wedding pictures editing? Well, there we go. This Well, I'll edit two or three now from, from this particular wedding, which is the same one we edited from before. So this is the straight out of the box, straight out the camera, rather, raw file. Um, just window light. Just, literally the easiest shot in the world to take. 85 mil, 
f1.8 window light portrait easy to take but looks beautiful i've obviously posed the bride here so that the light is really nice on her face but that really simple um so let's now edit this this was taken on my sony the light is good so sony main preset we now need to do global changes it's probably a bit warm uh, so let's just drop down the white balance slightly again it's a personal preference thing let's put it about there i would say so not much um, do I need to do anything else? I might just lift up the shadows slightly. Put it about there. Now let's go to our selective changes. Let's go to the brushes. So new, first of all, faces brush. Make the brush a bit smaller. Again, I'm only going to concentrate on going over the left-hand side of her face. Namisha's face, not her, sorry. I'm going to go over the flowers a little bit. There we go. That's all I need to do. I'm now going to burn in the right-hand side of the frame, this area, a bit more. So let's go to Gradient Filter, New, and Burn. Let's just drag over there. Now, you'll notice when you use the burn brush, you'll never lose detail with, with the burn brush because what, what it's also doing is raising the, the black slightly. So you're not going to lose detail. Um, we have got lost detail in this bit. We'll, we'll sort that out in a second. So let's, go, let's do that. So by going to Brush new and bring it back just to bring back these areas of blue that means we've got no lost detail and that will be us done for this one so with this one we've gone from there oh sorry let me just take that off so you don't see the blue now we've gone from there to there take seconds let's do a couple of others from this same wedding Let's, rather than being a portrait, let's let's take one that is from the ceremony. This is a good example because straight out of the box, without me applying anything, the couple are more in shadow at the top half and the, 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 the bottom half of them is more in, in light. Again, remember, I want to rejig the brightest part of the photograph so that your eye goes to their heads and faces more so than it does the bottom half of the, the picture. So let's reset that. Let's apply our main preset now i'm going to do global changes i'm going to bring up the exposure of everything about there but you can see here what i need to do straight away i need to increase the exposure on their faces and decrease the exposure on their clothes so let's first of all apply increase the exposure on their faces by using the faces brush there we go a little bit over here remember we can do if we think that's not enough all we do is just increase the power of the brush there will do now i'm going to use the gradient tool to save the highlights let's just whip up there good let's just recrop in so it's a bit straighter and that again will be it i might just do global changes increase everything slightly there we go so with this one we've gone from there to there Again, let me say, I shot underexposed on purpose because look how the background could have been blown out if I would have exposed correctly in this example. So I don't want to lose the highlight. So for that, I underexpose when I'm taking the photograph. Now, please only do this if you're shooting RAW. Do not underexpose like this if you're shooting in JPEG because a, a RAW file has a lot of latitude to go up to bring the exposure up or bring it down afterwards. If you're shooting in JPEG, you, you're very, very, you're, the, the latitude and, and the, your ability to change the exposure afterwards is very, very much smaller. So if you're shooting in JPEG, try and get the exposure right on the on the focal point of the photograph not by shooting for the highlights which is what i'm doing here hamish is in the room <laughs> i like your entrance hamish um so david's saying just playing around with the presets but i'm only getting the fuji option but the images are taken on the sony so when you sorry uh david so you're not seeing all of these um, if you just let me know in the chat, because we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll try and do like a um, customer services on the chat. Um, you should, the, the, the presets as you might have seen come with an inst a PDF, which is instructions of how to install them. Um, so if you follow the instructions, you should basically see all of them, even though and you can just delete the ones that don't apply to you. But you should see them all. Um, so let me know, David, in the chat. I'm going to apply, what, just going to edit another one and I'll, I'll come back and just um, check. But we'll sort it out, don't worry. It won't be anything um, too major. Um, right, let's just do this one. This is a really easy one to edit because the light is very flat. So main preset, everything's a bit overexposed. Global changes, 
about there. Faces brush, new. See, I, I, I without even thinking, I, I, I'm doing this on autopilot. Um, and that's the great thing. Once you once you get used to using the process and the brushes, you really sort of just fly through it. Let's just bring back the highlights outside of the faces. There we go. There we go. Does that, how long did that one take? Um, again, I'm, probably, I'm, I'm not going to try and pronounce your name again because I feel like I'm going to get it wrong, which is a bit bad of me. So, um, did you do a video on the histogram on Patreon? Want to learn more? No, there's no video as such, but I talk about this in much more detail in the uh, in the video which accompanies the preset pack. So whichever way place you get the presets from, there is that 70 minute video which will show you exactly how I use what, what the histogram does. But just in a nutshell, basically the, these I want to retain the detail. I don't want to lose any two things to say. I don't want to lose either any of the shadow areas or any of the highlights. So if we, the histogram can show us by ticking these two boxes up here, if we're losing detail, you see all these little bits of blue that just appear there, that is telling us that that is just area pure black. Now we've lost the detail. So the histogram tells us that. So I just want to bring up the blacks now until to the point where we don't lose those details. And it's exactly the same with the highlights. If we push the whites too far, we get these areas of red. We don't want to lose that because that's just an area of pure white. If I untick this box, it's just white, nothing else. And again, that looks really bad if you print out that image. So we want to retain the detail. So that's one reason to use the histogram. But the other thing is, if you like images like, like I do, which are punchy, vibrant, colorful, all that good stuff, you want to make sure that the histogram is going from the left-hand side all the way through to the right. So if we push the, the whites all the way down here, do you see how there's a gap now over here on the right-hand side? I don't want that gap to be there. So what I do is increase the whites to the point where that gap is closed up. And that gives you the punch. That gives you the contrast. Um, and, and these areas of the histogram here, so we've got, you see, how, look at these words here, blacks, shadows, no man's land, highlights and white refer to these areas. So if you push up the shadows, it's going to push up that area of the histogram. I hope that helps, but I go into it more detail in that video. Jane says, so as you've already covered this, I'm just gonna just um, turn Lightroom off for a second. Let's go here. If you, so if you've already covered this, I've been dealing with a three-year-old while trying to watch. Don't worry at all, James. Um, is there a huge difference between JPEG and RAW files when editing? Yes, there is. Um, so if, if you're shooting JPEG only, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, because if, you, if you're happy with your photographs out of camera, then by all means shoot JPEG. And it's obviously much quicker because you don't really need to do any editing. But I would say that if you want to really do any editing at all with your files, my advice is don't shoot in JPEG because basically think of think of like a an elastic band I guess a raw file will let you pull that elastic band this far and you can make lots of changes you can you can change the white balance from wherever you want it to be the white balance is completely unaffected when you shoot in raw which means that when we're editing you can change that white balance wherever you want it to be afterwards which is really good and um, you can also push up the exposure you can bring it back you can go a long way there's probably i don't know how much how many stops there actually is in a raw file but it's quite a lot if that elastic band is a JPEG, we can only pull it a little bit. So if you want to change a, a JPEG file when you're editing quite a, a lot, it, it will look bad and it will look back bad in the form of the color. It's gonna look bad and also the noise. You know, if you try and push up the exposure of a raw file past the point that the, raw, the JPEG feel, sorry, if you try and push up the, the, um, the exposure of a JPEG, you've not got very far to go until the noise starts showing through and it's just gonna look bad. So by all means, shoot JPEG if you're happy with your photographs out of camera, but if you do want to get into editing, certainly the sort of editing that I'm showing you on this stream, then I, 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 you have to shoot uh, raw, basically. 
So I hope that's not bad news for you. But um, there's nothing, there's no right or wrong. I know some excellent photographers who, who shoot JPEG because they're happy with their files as they are out of um, out of camera. But my whole style requires a raw file because I'm shooting, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, I'm shooting underexposed, knowing that I'm going to push back bring up the exposure afterwards. I couldn't do that if I shot purely in JPEG. As it happens, I do shoot JPEG and draw, but the, the JPEGs are just back up. Um, uh, is there something in the histogram to look to be right in terms of the highlight and shadow? Is there no clipping warning for them? Yeah, the, this, the, the, these two boxes, let me just go back. These two boxes up. Do you see my mouth pointer, by the way? I'm hoping that you do. If you do, these two, if you look at the histogram, there's two boxes, top left of the histogram and top right. You see, I'm turning them on and off now. That is the clipping. So I always edit with these turned on so that I can see any errors that I make. And when I say errors, any, any lost details. So again, let's just go back to this one, for example. Let's reset this just in case anybody missed this one in the beginning of the stream. So this one is going to be my lifting shadows preset. Now, we, we have lost detail there. However, it's the bright sky, so I'm not going to worry too much. We can save them, but if we save them, we start to see a bit of yellow fringing. It's not, I'm, not, I'm going to let that one slide. But basically, what I'm showing you is that the, the red area there is indicating lost highlight. But you can't, you can't always save it. I say, this is, this is the sun. You, you, it's very hard to, be, to underexpose the sun if you want to retain detail in the foreground. But again, I'm just going to edit this one very quickly. For, for those that missed it, so new faces, just to show you the speed, go over the faces, just to bring out the exposure slightly, bit there. Let's go to uh, new golden gaze, just to warm up that light. Takes seconds. Done. From there to there. Let's do another one. Let's go to. Let's go to this one. This is a good example for the bokeh brush. So again, out of camera, nothing wrong with it, but it's a bit flat. This is what a JPEG file will look like, because this is a JPEG. It will also just look flat and lacking contrast because the cameras don't include that contrast direct. Um, so let's just um, click on, uh, I've seen your question, Paul. I'll answer it in two seconds. Um, let's just click on main preset. Right, two things I want to do here. Remember about what I said about the brightest point. The brightest point, I want to be the bride. It's not the bride at the moment. It's um, it's this foreground bokeh. So I'm going to do two things. And I'm going to do all this now with purely the radial filter. I'm going to, first of all, use the faces brush. So new faces. I'm going to invert it. So it's affecting everywhere inside of this circle to bring up the bride. I'm going to click on new and save highlights. This time I'm going to untick this box. It's going to affect everywhere outside of the bride. I'm going to increase that a bit more. I'm going to use new and bokeh brush. Again, outside of the bride. Let's increase the power of that. And that's probably it. And we've gone from there to there. Now one thing to mention, do you see how the, the corner of, the, of this image, when I do before and after, it's slightly changing. That is because the preset has built-in lens correction. So Lightroom, through the preset, knows what lens this was taken on, and it also knows it's going to correct that lens. So it's the, the, the lens um, correction is going to be slightly different for each photograph, depending on what lens you use. So that's why the before and after is slightly changing. So it's taking away that distortion. But again, that, that's how quick it was. And all I did there was apply the preset. I made no global changes, actually, to that. I just went straight to the selective changes with the brushes and just used four radial filters. Bang, bang, bang. Now, the thing is, as well, was I being accurate with those selections? No, I wasn't. Um, do I need to be? No, because you can't see the join. The reason you can't see the join is that built in, these brushes have a high feather. So if the feather was set to zero, you would see the line between what is being affected and what is not being affected. And we don't want that. Um, it's important that the, the feather is high so that you don't get that. So I'm just going to break off for a second um, and just um, help Paul out here. Again, I'll be stopping this stream in about 20 minutes. So if you have any questions, please jump in.
Oh, sorry, that shouldn't have been left on. Sorry about that. Um, let's go back up here. Right, so Paul asked, um, sorry for being thick, but how do I access the content, content for the Patreon? I've created a login, but it's asking me to log in again on your Patreon page. I'm not sure what's gone wrong there. Um, if you, I can't check at the moment, unfortunately, um, Paul, but I will, message me please on, on Facebook, if that's all right, um, or on Instagram, just DM me and we'll sort it out. It should just be a case of you literally joining up, signing up to the Patreon and then you get, you see all the, all the information. Um, it's asking me to log in again. I'm I'm not sure, but we'll sort it out after the stream if you don't mind, Paul. But it, yeah, well, don't worry about it. Just please DM me or Facebook or um or Instagram, and we'll sort that out for you. Again, just be what just quickly before I edit that. Um, just before I finish the stream by editing a couple more images, I want just to talk because Paul just mentioned it about the Patreon again. Let me say, like, hopefully, if you've watched my YouTube channel we built up a bit of a trust here and you, you, you know, I, everything that I show you is, is, is transparent. It's honest. You, I always show you the before and afters. I show you the raw files. I show you exactly how I work. I hold nothing back. So if that, if you sort of <laughs> trust me on all that, then trust me. If you're interested in improving your wedding photography, either without me shooting, improving your wedding photography business, improving your editing, whatever it be, any aspect of your business, trust me when I say this, the Patreon now is so good. It, it's, it's got a ridiculous amount of information in there. Let me just say again what, it, what, it, what is already in there because I'm so proud of this. First of all, you get access to 100 hours, 100 hours of content instantly. That is more than all of my YouTube channel added up. You can join three live streams a month. Those live streams are on Zoom, so we just have a big chat for at least two hours for each live stream. Um, you can download my presets for free. The normal cost of them is going to be an English money, £30. The Patreon costs £6.95 for February only. There's exclusive videos. Uh, you can join a private Facebook group, which I'm in all the time answering questions. And the community in there is amazing. It's so, so good what has been created in there. And everyone, it's really active, that group. People posting all the time. As well as that, you get early access to every single YouTube video that I make, including bonus content for many of them as well. Just to give you an example of who we've had on some of the live streams, some of the live streams are hosted by me, some are hosted by uh, some we have guests on. These are who, just some of who we've had on so far, we've had Arnold de Brown, an amazing creative wedding photographer, also a MagMod ambassador. Um, Marlies Hartman, again, incredible Los Angeles based wedding photographer, also a MagMod ambassador and an ambassador for, for SLR Lounge. Karen Julia, she runs her own SEO agency. She spent two hours talking to us about SEO. And we've, and some of, I know many people at the Patreon have implemented her strategies, seeing their website um, increase up, up the rankings. Scott Joe's White, an amazing, amazing um, photographer. Um, again, a MagMod ambassador, a SLR lounge ambassador. Nadine Van Billion, a masterclass in sales. That was two days ago, that one. It blows my mind what she told us in there. It's going to change how I host my inquiry meetings from now on. Dave Thompson, an incredible press photographer who has shot the, the, the wedding of Kate and William for the press. So many good stories. And it, it, I could listen to Dave all day. Chris Garback told us about, talked us through Studio Ninja. This wasn't just a demonstration of Studio Ninja. Chris created Studio Ninja. It's his thing. So you're hearing it direct from the creator. Dave Stanbury, he's a WPPI speaker. He's a fellow of the BIPP, the MPA, and uh, the SWPP. You can't get a, a photographer with more qualifications than Dave. He was amazing. And Adam Wing, one of the UK's top wedding videographers, talking to us about how to make a transition into video. So they're just, that's only the, the, the guests that we've had on, but there are 20 other live streams, as you can see here, which I've hosted. I did a net talking about how you, to make venue pages for your website, how to use Final Cut, how to use Instagram to increase your followers, increase engagement, my off-camera flash setups for speeches and for first dance, how to make slideshows that increase emotional impact by interjecting audio and video, second all that second shooting, Sikh weddings, um, I've done streams where I've edited members, 
raw files there is so much so so much and it costs six pounds 95 a month and you can cancel after one month it's mental how much is in there i think anyway let's just go back now and um do a little bit of editing um for the last 10 minutes or so so let's just see what we haven't edited so far right i'm going to fly through these let's do this one black and white oh sorry i've not i need to turn this off you should now hopefully be seeing lightroom again yep so let's go to faces brush for this one let's just again i'm just going to go through these quickly now because because this i'm going to all i'm doing here is just following the exact same um process that i've taught you through on this stream from there to there which let's find another one that we've not done yet let's do this one in black and white as well faces again global changes now we've got we've got to bring back the um the lost detail we're also going to bring back the highlights here as well so new save highlights let's just go over there done literally takes that long let's do let's go for this one this is going to be a lifting shadows one this because the, the light wasn't great so global changes bring it back go about here let's let's save the highlights if we can yeah we can of up there let's go to new faces bring it back a little bit done there to there let's go to this one okay this is main preset a bit too bright let's bring down there maybe push back the whites a little bit let's use the bokeh brush in the foreground is that a bit too warm maybe so let's go to now we're going to add in the bokeh brush affecting everywhere outside of the circle there we go that's done from there to there we've edited that one oh let's let's go to this one there's a few from this wedding i love i can't tell you how much i love this wedding right um main preset maybe a bit too warm let's just turn that off for now i'm going to save the highlights of the bottom half of this so save highlights just bring up do we want to bring it back maybe just lessen the strength of that a little bit maybe even use the faces brush slightly um not much new faces just there because i just want your eye to look at the misha's face let's bring up oh just a little bit and let's also just burn in new gradient filter burn just that right hand side just to really focus your eye and then it's just a little crop again though what i'm saying when i look at that image straight out of camera i know see how i've rejigged the brightest point now let me say again i think it was james that answered this question if you're shooting in jpeg you couldn't do that but if well you if you did it would look bad it would just look really bad so that's the reason that i shoot in um in raw let's see i'm trying to find the ones that we've not edited we've done really well actually we've got through loads let's do this one right so main preset it needs to be warmed up this one now we're on the cusp here of losing the highlights in the bride's dress but we haven't yet so i don't need to do that i am going to use the bokeh brush everywhere outside of the couple but not that strong so let's just turn it down about there and also save highlights as well again outside of the couple again not as strong as that I'll do and let's just now crop in so with that one we've gone from there to there let's just do a black and white one for this one then we'll go to the questions just to finish off so remember if any questions please feel free to jump on and ask me because we've only got a few minutes left right with this one we're going to do normal black and white now obviously out of camera we need to do quite a bit with this i'm going to double click the word shadows that's going to bring the shadows back up these are global changes there we go now it's going to go to new and faces 
every single image that I edit has the brushes used in them somewhere. New, let's bring back the highlights ever so slightly on the veil. Not a lot. And let's also just bring back that little bit there. And that's it. We're going from there to there. In fact, right, literally one more and then questions. And then we will um, we'll finish off. I'm going to do this one again. I've already done this, but I'm going to reset it just to show you again. Because this is, again, quite a big difference. So with this one, let's go to main preset. Global changes. Let's warm it up. I think we want to go about there. Right, that's it for global changes. Brush, new faces, just to bring up the exposure ever so slightly on the couple. That's all I need to do. Let's do, let's warm up that light in the background now. So new, golden gaze. There we go. Nice warm light. And let's make that bokeh more pronounced. So new, bokeh, and just watch the background pop. There it goes. And let's add, let's just try and bring back those highlights. Remember, if you can't bring back the highlights, don't worry about it. In fact, I'll just turn off that so you can see. And then just to finish off, we're just going to add in a slight vignette. Done. There to there. So I hope that was all useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask now and um, I'll answer before we finish. But I hope you found this all useful. I always love doing stuff like this. Um, and I hope you found it um, as useful as, as um, or as much as, you enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, question here, Ray, um, just jump in and say, hi Neil, keep rocking it. Thank you, Ray. Really appreciate that. Ray has a, a YouTube channel, by the way. Really cool channel. Thank you, Ray. Um, go and check him out. Um, well done on the on the Magmod how I shot it as well, Ray. I've not watched it yet, but I'm sure it's amazing. Um, Ayn Khan, uh, if you could use only one focal length for a wedding, what would it be? Easy, easy. In fact, somebody else could, it, who no prizes. Let's see who can answer that for me um, quickest in the chat. But I mean, it's not even a question for me. Um, what would it be? Have two cameras, but one thirty-five and one eighty-five is cool. Well, you've already answered it. Yeah, it's a thirty-five mil. <laughs> Um, if I could only use one, I'd be more than happy shooting on a 35 mil all day. No problem at all. Um, so I, that's quick what you said, because you want to have one, one camera, and that's cool, but I, I, I couldn't shoot a wedding with literally one camera. If I did, it'd be the 35, but I, I always want the 35 here, my 85 here. They're always in the same place, so I know which one. It's like muscle memory. I just learn to pick up um, which one... That, I feel it's is, is, um, is right for that particular shot I want, but I don't need to think about it then. Just boom, lift, lift it up and you're done. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone's answering for me, yeah. Um, thank you, Bren, appreciate that. Sandy's got my combination perfect, same as yours, 35, 85. And uh, Jod Photography, 35 mil as well. Cool, so I think we've answered, answered all the questions. Again, if you have any questions just for the last three minutes, feel free to jump in and ask away. But I hope you found this useful. I hope you found it really useful. I'm just gonna go over a couple of the main points that I said at the beginning. Again, this has been about my how I edit in Lightroom, and I've used my new preset pack to do that. But again, although obviously I'd love it if you wanted to choose my preset pack, please do not expect to buy the presets and then apply the preset and expect your images to look loads better. They'll look maybe a little bit better, but that won't do the job. You have to follow the process as with any presets you buy. Step one, apply the preset. Step two, global changes. Step three, brushes. And again, the preset pack comes with instructions and the, instru the instructions is a 70 minute video where I talk you through everything in detail. Um, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody's bought the presets. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I send you a personalized email um, to, to send you those. I think I think it's John. Is it John? <laughs> I'm sure it is, but I don't know. I, I was calling you Jod Photography just in case I got that wrong. But yeah, if, if I'm right and who you are, John, then then yeah, I will send you uh, an email as soon as this stream finishes with, with the presets on. The presets will come in the form of a zip file. Within that zip file, you'll find a presets um, folder 
a brush use folder and instructions of how to install them in Lightroom. It takes seconds to install them, but, but look at the PDF file that's included in that zip file. That will show you um, how to install them. And I'll also send you a link to the 70 minute video, um, which goes through in detail um, everything about how I created the presets, what the presets do, how you can change them, and also how I use them. Um, Joe said, oh, thank you so much. Amazing set of brushes, Neil. That golden gaze is a game changer. If you haven't joined the Patreon, what are you waiting for? I didn't say that. Joe said that. Thank you, Joe. Um, James, sorry. Sorry, I was thinking of somebody else. Sorry, James. I will email you, James, in a, in a few minutes as soon as the stream finishes. Sorry about that, James. But thank you so much for buying the presets, and I hope you enjoy using them. Um, I hope this stream's been useful. Um, perfect. David says everything works perfectly. Excellent. Pleased to hear that. Um, it's always a bit difficult. Lightroom does not make it easy to import brushes and presets and things like that. Um, hopefully the instructions are easy to follow, but yeah, it's, it's not, it's not ideal. I must admit. Um, but again, do not ever buy presets expecting them to work out of the box. That's just me giving you solid, honest advice. They won't do that. Doesn't matter who the presets are from, they won't work out of the box. You have to then make the changes afterwards, which is why you should always like find instructions. Um, thank you, Alex. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah, Alex was on the the Nadine um, live stream as well. I know that he. I think he he was the same as me. A bit like that is amazing stuff. Um, Parthi Ban, again, apologies if I've said your name wrong. Big fan of your photography. More behind the scenes videos about external flash. Thank you so much. I'm a little bit, my hands are a little bit tied behind my back at the moment, obviously because of the situation that we're in. But as soon as I can make more videos, I'll be out there doing that. And I'll do that, you know, in the form of like one-off videos where I do shoots, but also behind the scenes at real weddings as well. Sadly, at the moment, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do that. But as soon as I can, I will, I absolutely promise you, because I love making videos. I absolutely love it. And it's so nice to know that people enjoy watching them. Um, I mean, I'd probably make them if no one was watching them, because I just enjoy making them for me, but it's really nice to know that people also enjoy them and um, it gives people like, ideas for their own shots. Perfect, thank you, David. I really, really appreciate that. Um, very, very kind of you. So I'm gonna close the stream now. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the stream and found it useful. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments underneath this video and I will reply to them all. But again, if you want to get hold of the presets, you can do so in two places, either direct to my website and they'll be always be available on my website. That's neilrethvan.com slash presets or for this month only, if you join my Patreon, which is far cheaper, then you can download them from in there as well. But that is only available for February. The video will always remain in the Patreon, the instructions video, but the presets themselves will only be available to download for until the end of this month. After that, they'll just be available on the website. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you for all the likes. And yeah, I will see you next time. Over and out.